Well, welcome back, everyone. It's Nicola Cairncross here, and I haven't been around for a couple of weeks because I've been working on um, a complete rebrand, actually. And I wanted to explain to you why I decided to do that, because one of the things that people for, who get my newsletter say they value very much is to watch a working entrepreneur working <laughs> and being entrepreneurial and uh, why you know why you make the decisions you make and what drives you and things like that so I thought I'd just restart my YouTube channel um, recordings by um, I've had a very very frustrating day technologically speaking and as you can see I'm waiting for a haircut so uh I nearly didn't press record on the camera, but then I watched a bit of Neil Oliver doing his Q&A sessions. And I thought, do I actually care what Neil's fringe looks like when he's answering questions? No, I don't. So I'm just going to sit and ignore that. And uh, next week I'll be a little better groomed. But uh, yeah, so so what I want to just talk to you today about was the fact that I've, I've rebranded everything because um, the new book is out. Let me just show you. This is not... This is not the final copy. Now, how can I show you that? So it goes into, oh, there we go. So this is um, the new book. It's rather beautiful inside. It's got a really lovely font and it's got some nice little pictures, um, but it's not the, the final cover. This was the draft cover and it's got a much more business-like looking cover on it now. So if you go to Amazon, don't be alarmed that this is not the cover, but I just wanted to show you, you know, what a chunky little bugger it is because it's, it's actually the book I'm most proud of so far because it's a book that I've written, um, as you might know, as a story. And it's the story of my awakening to the th the main thing that stops most people succeeding in life. And it happened to me at the very ripe old age of 35, ripe old age of 35. And that's the other thing I'm going to try and do today is try and do a, a recording that doesn't need too much editing. So, yeah. So why did I? So, right. Coming back to the book. So this sort of gave me the opportunity to rebrand because I've had an ongoing problem since back in the day when I had my first business, when I got Google slapped and the website got um, delisted and my email address got, got blacklisted and it just went on like that. And then Facebook picked up, picked up on that and I had problems with that. And then I went to clicksandleads.com after a, a while. And that, you know, I had a few business situations between that, but clicks and leads eventually got tarred with the same brush. And uh, nicolacairncross.com got tarred with the same brush. So even saying the names of those domains might be might be scuppering me, I don't know. Um, it was because my first book was about teaching ordinary people how to do extraordinary things with money. I fell foul of it in 2006. I remember the exact moment when I realized something weird was going on. Um, but I've been jumping from URL to URL ever since. It's a bit like a game of whack-a-mole. But uh, yeah, so I'm up to an, a, a new, a brand new um, situation now because I've been working for the last 25 plus years with authors, experts, speakers, uh, trainers and all kinds of all kinds of experts basically and I've been helping them to improve their digital marketing well with this book I'm expanding my operations a little bit because I there's only so many times you can tell people how to do email marketing there's only so many times you can tell people how to um, get a get build a following and and put people through a sales funnel and then set up a, a course or a a membership site from your expertise and what I want to do, particularly with this book, is to expand on my story, but also to tell that in a hero's journey kind of exciting way, because my my life did go up and down and up and down. And um, it's, you know, I learned some stuff along the way, as I say, 25 hard learned lessons is the latest iteration of that subtitle. Because each lesson was hard learned and each chapter leads on to the lesson learned. So it's quite an unusual kind of book. And I'm hoping that it will become quite popular over time as people read it and recommend it. And um, the, the, the reviews are coming in very favourable at the moment. But it's given me an opportunity to think about what I want to do and how I want to continue working with people as a mentor and a coach. And um what kind of content I want to be putting out? Because, of course, in order to sell anything online, you have to build an audience. And the audience I've built on YouTube is pretty much the right kind of audience 
But as you might have known from previous watching previous videos, I stuffed that up a bit by chasing the search engine traffic on one particular video, which brought a lot of traffic, but it was the wrong kind of traffic. So that's the thing about YouTube. You have to be very careful about who your audience is. And I think my audience is anyone who is looking to become a better entrepreneur, whether that's in the startup phase, whether it's in the, um, the fact that you've started to make some money and you want to scale it up, or whether it's in the phase of some of my clients who are incredibly extraordinarily successful in their own right, but who then want to branch out into a different lane or who want to see where they're losing money, where they're leaving money on the table in their business. That seems to be one of my superpowers, find, helping people find the hidden gold in their business. So the whole book thing has enabled me to slightly twist my branding a little bit, to go back to branding myself, but with a new URL, um, and to go into a, a, a more expanded, wider field of content. So I was thinking about how to do that. And um, as you, as if you're a long-term viewer of this channel, you'll know that I had, I've, for some reason, I've struggled with ideas for content. I think that's because there's this constant push-pull of what do my audience want or need? Well, what, what do they want, which is one thing? What do they need, which is a completely separate thing? And then um, what do I want to do and what am I interested in? And the thing about the better entrepreneur concept is that I'm unfailingly interested in the psychology of being an entrepreneur. What makes one person an entrepreneur and one person not? What makes me different from the rest of my family who are all quite happy to go and get, get a job and work quite happily? And I'm actually a bit jealous of that, to be honest, that they can all go and go to a, a desk job or, or whatever kind of job they're doing every single day and not think too deeply about it just you know do their jobs well and get paid and come home and forget about it which I'm as I say I'm a bit bit a little bit jealous of <laughs> because I'm constantly thinking about my business all the time and I can't stop myself luckily I've got some friends around me who are just the same so I feel okay about that I don't feel quite so um, out, out on a limb as a weirdo but uh, so yeah so what I started to do so what I've started to do is I've started to change everything to uh, talk about being a better entrepreneur as, as the core thing rather than be everywhere online, which some social media platforms, again, didn't like that concept at all. And what I've also started to do is to rebrand the whole Nicola Cairncross thing. And I've got a new uh, logo that I'm happy with. I've got a new looking website that I'm happy with. And I'm starting to rebrand um, my LinkedIn and my YouTube and my Twitter headers to reflect that new brand. And I'm feeling quite um, incentivized by it. The other thing that came to me this week is um, I've started to think about how can I most easily put out content? And I was looking at one of my previous coaches, Chris Barrow, whose um, website is coachbarrow.com. And he's had that URL since I've known him, which was back in 1998 or 1999, a long time ago now. And so he's been blogging on that every single work day, might even, yeah, every single work day, um, and he reaches dentists. So everything he talks about on that blog is uh, dentist orientated. And you can imagine the search engine juice he's built up over the years. Now, I looked at some of his blog posts last week and they were pithy, I think is the word for. <laughs> some of them are only like 250 words long, but they every single one of them, there's no fluff, there's no frills, there's just good information that is of interest to dentists. And that is how he's built his business, that and speaking um, and he did co-write a book with um, E-Myth, Michael Gerber. He did E-Myth for Dentists. But that's pretty much it. He's had one book out, as far as I'm aware. He's blogged every day, every weekday. And he's done speaking engagements and appeared on other people's webinars and things like that. And that is how he's built his business since 1998. Talk about keeping it simple and what a blissful relief that must be. So I thought, oh, I could do that again. I mean, I did. That's how I built my first business online, by blogging every day, pretty much. I think it might be three times a week. And uh, then right, sending out a newsletter at the end of the week. So I thought, let's just strip it right back. Let's just make it really simple. And let's just start writing again. Because obviously, writing the book got me in the flow again of writing. So I started writing blog posts on NicolaCareNext.com. 
and they're daily and they're going up till Monday to Friday and they get mailed out to my mailing list just so they don't have to remember to go and look at them on the blog. So that's nice. That's a nice bit of tech I've reintroduced. Um, the other thing I thought to myself, I was in a shower the other day thinking, what can I do with that YouTube channel? And what can I do with that Substack podcast? Because that's where my podcast is hosted now. I thought, you're an idiot. You're creating the content on the blog. Why don't you just turn it into audio for the podcast and why don't you just turn it into video for YouTube now I've got to work out how to do that because as I say I've had a challenging techie morning trying to get a teleprompter going so that I can do a zoom meeting like this that's where I record my stuff and I can actually look at you while seeing what I'm supposed to be saying because what I normally do is make bullet points sorry about the sirens there we go. Um, I, I usually make bullet points and then just speak spontaneously. But I figure that if I've written a blog post, I might as well um, use a teleprompter and see if I can read it quite naturally while looking at the camera. I'm not convinced it's going to work. And I've had three attempts at subscribing and I can't get Zoom to work with it at all. So I gave up in disgust, went off to make coffee, watched a bit of Neil Oliver, thought to myself, look, he's just sitting there looking into a camera, talking and answering questions. For God's sake, just do it. Just get something out this week and then you can see if you can get the bells and whistles going for next week. So as I'm starting again, in a way, I want to know what you want to know. So have a look at the list of videos that I've made so far. Um, do tell me in the comments under this video if there's anything you'd like me to cover about being a better entrepreneur, um, no matter where you are in your journey. And also do tell me if you've read the book. Here we go. Better Entrepreneur, available on Amazon. Actually, if you come to a abetterentrepreneur.com, you can get a digital copy without needing a Kindle. So um, I've made it available on paperback, Kindle, and a digital copy for all other gadgets. Let me know if you've read it. Let me know what you think about it. Let me know if you've, um, you, you resonate with any of the 25 lessons there. And uh, I look forward to talking to you next week, probably. And do come and check out the blog at nicolacarenext.com. See you later.